air conditioning on this 2020 Toyota Highlander. So the condenser had to be removed, radiator, because all this front sheet metal was removed and replaced because of a front end accident. And they actually still reused the old condenser and uh, just some sheet metal had to be done. So we're about to charge this up and this is a hybrid. So which one do we have? We have the hybrid 2020, if our, uh, there we go, 2020 hybrid, all wheel drive, dual air conditioning. So this has air conditioning in the rear too. Limited model. And the duct work inside here is up above. So you always want to make sure all your all your vents are opening. And when you test, you test with the rear air conditioning on. If you have back vents here, there's no back vents here. But if you did have like little side vents in the from the front or here in the side, you make sure every vent is open because the more vents you have wide open, the more airflow you have over your evaporator, the heavier the load that you can have on your vapor. So that's one of the things I do is always make sure windows or doors are open because you're gonna be testing it heavy and open. See how these are turned all the way over facing this direction, you don't want that. That makes restriction, that slows down the airflow over. You feel faster airflow over your fingers when they're restricted, but it slows down the volume, the mass volume of air going over the evaporator. So you put them in their mid position and you find their center and this relieves the pressure, the static pressure built up in the system so you can have a higher airflow. So I go around, I have it on the vacuum pump right now. Get them all in the mid position. This is all stuff you can do while you're on the vacuum pump or doing other things or doing your paperwork. So the only reason I have it on the vacuum pump because I'm about to put it under the high pressure nitrogen decay test because they took these off and I wanna make sure they didn't damage the O-rings when they put them back together. So I had it on the vacuum pump for about four or five minutes now. That's enough because this is not my vacuum pressure decay test. This is only removing the moisture from the air that contaminated the system. Get anything I can out right now with the vacuum pump. And now I'm gonna switch it over to nitrogen. So before I switch it over to the nitrogen, I close the low side because I'm not pushing the nitrogen. I'm gonna use the nitrogen as part of my triple vacuum and flush of um, evac to flush moisture out of the system at the same time remember this is a rear system if you look back here you can see the t and that second section line right there is going all the way over and down and back to the rear vehicle you have a lot many feet of line set so your dry nitrogen after you did your vacuum will sweep the system and help remove a little bit of moisture so let's uh kill the vacuum right now we'll turn that off Remember, closed, closed vacuum, open on the high side, and you can see the pressure decay right now with the moisture in the system. And eventually that'll level off and stop, but it's just telling your moisture level. If you left it on for a few hours or overnight, it would go down way below 100 and hit. But until then, when it's been in a body shop and the lines have been open to atmosphere, POE oil or PAG oil, especially POE oil, absorbs a lot of moisture and you cannot get it all out. You can reduce it, but you cannot get it all out. So let's open up some pressure here. Let's make sure this is closed. Open the valve. Okay, nitrogen, open, closed, hard shut off expansion valves. You're gonna see the high pr side pressure stay up higher and longer and the low side will stay lower. So let's get this done. One, two, three, go. So now you'll see it's going through both front and rear units on the liquid lines. It's following the liquid lines. It's going through the expansion valves, through the evaporators, and has to make its journey all the way back up the suction line and come up here to register on the transducer to show you the pressure. And you can see the difference. Here I got 200 PSI, a little higher than I normally go. I bumped the regulator, but on this vehicle, it has small micro channels that are very strong evaporator compared to a 1960s vehicle let's see if i could get the glare out of your eyes guys sorry about that but do you see how slow this is okay now i'm going to shut off the nitrogen just to show you this hard shut off feature of the expansion valves there nitrogen's off we have high side there and it's slowly coming up on this side 
as this slowly bleeds through both of the expansion valves, front and rear, goes through the evaporators, comes up the suction side, then through the low side service port, we're reading it over here. Let me give it a little bit more nitrogen, open it up. Okay, and I'm actually gonna rush this because I'm doing this just for you guys. I opened up the low side. Let's let it settle out. Now, you let it settle for 10, 15, 20 minutes to do this properly. And you let it stabilize really a long time, 15 minutes or so, before you shut off the nitrogen and perform your decay test. That's the proper way. But since I'm doing video and I'm doing this fast, I'm gonna sh just show this to run you through the procedures. So let's pretend 15 minutes has went by and the gauges stopped moving, it leveled off, the gas has adjusted and come to equilibrium with the temperature of the metal in the car. So the gas might expand or contract. So the pressure might go up or down after you turn off the nitrogen. Plus things like rubber might relax and expand and stretch a little bit and that'll make the pressure go down. So it relies on several scenarios depending whether it'll go up and down. So 15 minutes went by, pretend. We shut off our nitrogen. Now wait and watch it another few minutes. Make sure it doesn't move. If it's a big leak, it'll move fast. Uh, let me get you no glare. Okay, there we go. Let's see if I can focus you in a little clearer there. Hey, we got clarity. So now we're gonna press the tightness test. Remember, a long time has elapsed, but it really didn't. So now it's ready to perform the uh, tightness test, but if you read this, it says press enter to start test. So when we press enter, it's going to record these two readings. And let me make sure I have it open on both sides. Yeah, I have it open on both sides. Now I'm going to press enter. And it's going to start the timer. And you're going to see 0.0. .0 and that's going to show the difference of whether the pressure goes up or down. So let's press enter. So now you see 0.0. .0 and you see a timer going. So now you could go away for 15 minutes. And in 15 minutes, it shouldn't raise or drop, say more than one tenth of a PSI, because you waited 15 minutes for it to stabilize before you press the uh, tightness test. Unless you have a really obvious leak and you have it see it going down fast, that's different, you don't wait. I mean, common sense would tell you that, but that was not dished out in school. Um, so we go away and this is how it's performed, but I didn't wait. Just letting you see this. Okay, now let's pretend 15 minutes went by and I only see one tenth of a change, no big deal. So we stopped the test, 15 minutes went by. So let's stop the test. I'm going to uh, get out of this, start it over again. And let me close, I'm gonna bleed off. Close the high side. Remember I pushed the um, nitrogen through the high side in the beginning to sweep the system. And I'm gonna let it come out of the low side through the refrigerant line. And this will help flush, continue the flush from the high to low. So we're removing that dry nitrogen that I pushed in there from high to low. There we go. So now it's coming out right here, bleeding off to the air. This is nitrogen, and what do we breathe? We breathe nitrogen. 70% of our air is nitrogen, if you didn't know that. And that's what you breathe every day. All right, open that up some more. Put that down. Let's turn this back on. So we're almost down now. I'm not gonna open this. I'm gonna keep this closed. The high side is closed. I'm gonna read, but I'm letting all the nitrogen come out the slow side because now I'm gonna turn on the vacuum. But before I turn on the vacuum, I have to close this because we don't wanna suck in air. This was our refrigerant port that we just bled out the nitrogen through the low side, came over here and bled it out here. We always kept the high side off. So now we're gonna go under vacuum. Uh, well, let me, uh, let me zero this out. 
so I could reset this and make them even. I have to recalibrate this. You see the zero where it says zero pressure right there? Let me see if I could uh, zoom in on it. See where it says zero pressure? So I'm gonna hit that. There, now we're calibrated. Now I'm gonna close this. Now I'm gonna open up the vacuum. Open, close. So now I'm pulling the system from only one side and I'm using the dry nitrogen that I injected on the high side to sweep through all the lines. And when I was under that deep vacuum, it brought some of the moisture out of the oil and the pores of the metal to the surface. But because there was no more mass of air in the system to help pull it out, it just came to the surface and stayed there. I just used the dry nitrogen to push it and help bring it out and I'm sweeping it out through the system. Now you can repeat this three times if you have a really bad moisture ridden system. And uh, so say if it, that the rest period, the time went by 15 minutes and you notice this is a dual system. We're already into the microns right now. And we're only pulling through one side. So that is it. And, uh, and I forgot to show you, I, while I was doing the pressure test under nitrogen, I wanted to show you checking the fittings using the ultrasonic leak detector right here and using the spray bubbles. And I got carried away with doing uh, the video and I forgot to show you that, but no big deal. You just take the ultrasonic leak detector, you put on the headphones and you go down to where the fittings were attached and you just get down there anywhere. You don't even have to be close because the ultrasonic leak detector is so sensitive, it could pick up a smallest leak that you can never hear um, really easily with the nitrogen pressure. And then you put on the micro leak detector and it'll pick up the leaks even after five minutes. Uh, it usually doesn't dry up and it stays wet and it just keeps on bubbling even with the smallest bubble. And I forgot to show you that. So now I'm just gonna go through the vacuum and charge up the system. Uh, or already injected the oil and the dye, it's ready to go. Uh, it was only five milliliters of dye, UV dye, and I really didn't recover but a few milliliters of oil. So I put five milliliters of ND8 refrigerant oil. No, this was ND11 refrigerant oil in this one. Nope, ND12. God damn, I'm going through all the NDs. And D12 refrigerant oil, I believe, in this one. I gotta go back. You always could tell because if you go down on the back of the compressor, let me see if I could get you down there. There's a sticker. You see that sticker right there? That sticker will tell you exactly what oil is in the system. If I could punch the right there. So there. If you were missing the sticker under the hood, you could go to that sticker right there and find out exactly what's oils in the system as you can see when they replaced the hood or the top piece here the refrigerant sticker didn't go back on so then what do i do if they lost it you could go to mitchell adp ccc uh all that on demand one of those sources and you can pull up the refrigerant and the oil quantity and type then as you've seen in some of my videos i use uh site uh c y t k I think that's how it is. And I could get my reference of how much refrigerant needs to go back in here, what type of oil with viscosity of oil, and how much oil. All right, I'll see you guys later. And boy, my, my phone just doesn't want to focus.